So that was another force. Yeah. Well, it has to be. If I give him the card before we start, yeah. it has to be a force. But look, you, you know, Oops. you know that if you're doing uh, card tricks with people, there are certain cards that people may naturally go for. Yeah. You know, like sort of red cards and hearts and things like that. Or, you know, those sort of high numbers or picture cards that are kind of more popular choices than others. I mean, we both know that. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, or you can try and catch somebody out. In fact, just think of one. Can you get a card in your mind? Can you think of one? Yeah. Now, wouldn't it be the perfect mind reading trick? If I just don't change your mind, did you did you change your mind while we were doing it, or have you stuck with no, the original? No, I've stuck with the I've stuck with the original. Okay. And what's the card you're thinking of? Four of Clubs. You're going to give me any leeway here? No, I got it. I got it spot on. <laughs> And we didn't we didn't set that up. That is that is no, genuine. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what made you think of break it down? Why did you think of the four of clubs? Well, you, you'd said, I think, because you'd said about obvious ones, maybe. Yeah. And, and reds. Yeah. But I wasn't aware that I wasn't. I was only, no, you won't really be aware of it. But now. when you think back, you can think, well, maybe that influenced me. Maybe that influenced me. So but it still yeah. it still seems like it leaves quite a few. Cards. Why did why did you why did you go for the four of clubs? Because um, I I've just I've just done that so often with people that I know that if you if you start to eliminate those popular choices, the three and the four of clubs is what they always what they always go for. I could have put down the three. I just again just to magicians the three is a slightly more common number, like seven or whatever. So I so I didn't. I went for four, but you could have easily just you know said the three of clubs. Um, so I said to you. You know, we know that people tend to go for obvious cards, hearts, or you know, picture cards and mm. high values, that kind of thing. That red cards are often more popular. Um, or you can try and catch someone out. And by doing this, I'm basically getting. I'm saying to tell, you, tell me catch me out. Don't go for any of those. Go for the opposite. Go for a really obscure one that isn't a high value, isn't a red card, isn't a picture card. And just setting you up to think, okay, what's a, what's a really obscure one? And uh, it just works. Just try it. Just try it with people. Um, now the way those are working on there is sli- slightly different. I have specific forces that I use for specific cards. So the three of diamonds. Yeah. Um, I say, um, imagine a just get the screen in your mind, and you'll you'll see from the thing it's just you just move and keep going. So the screen I make a diamond in the air like that, um, and uh, so you're seeing make make a screen in your mind with it's a card. So the little number low in in the corner, and I'm saying little number low and drawing a three in the the top and the bottom like that. Um, and the things down the middle, the, the, um, the what do you call them, the spots or the pips, and I'm you know I'm just basically drawing a three of a three of diamonds in the air, and I say to them before I make the colour bright and vivid, um, right. which sounds like I'm doing it to help them, but you're saying it's a red card. Um, I get the screen with the four corners, and again I make I make the diamond shape. Um, when you watch it, you'll see it's just a question of just doing that's it very very quickly. Just the whole thing what, takes a few seconds. That's all I did there. Did that, Same thing with the four of hearts. You'll see me making the heart thing getting the idea of four across. Um, it's not foolproof, but you see, that what, the, the way to think of it is that if you... Um, you could do it very, very blatantly and say to somebody, I'm going to send you a card. Now, I'm not really going to send you a card psychically, so don't think of anyone, but just watch what I do and see if you can work out what the card is. Um, so, you know, you, you can do that and then say, so I'm thinking of a card and I'm thinking of the suit at the moment and I'm thinking of the thing, you know, you can make it absolutely blatant, which would be ridiculous. Now, that's one extreme. Yeah. The other extreme is that you just kind of, you just think through your diamonds in your mind and just, and just talk and hope that it comes out somehow. What you've got to do is just get it just on the line where you're in fact sort of blatantly throwing all this information at them and telling them what to do, but doing it in such an offhand kind of manner such a fair manner and, and such a quick manner that does, doesn't really give them the chance to think too much that they don't think that's what you're doing they will feel manipulated by it sometimes right. I, mean, I don't know how you felt with that but often with this kind of stuff they will I oh. felt led I felt led it, it felt, I felt led into it but not in um, but that's only being aware of, of what you're doing like when you were explaining yeah and you said, but if not so if we had you catch me out and, and that just feels like it draws me in. To and makes you want to catch me out yeah, suddenly. Yeah. yeah. Without me saying, go on, try and catch me out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the stuff where you're making all these gestures, they will feel a bit more manipulated by it. But again, it's fine because you are doing what you're saying you're doing. This is actually the, the, the genuine skill of being able to influence you and put an idea in your mind. 
mm. rather than faking that, you are, you are actually doing it with a deck of cards. You are actually doing it. Well, these techniques are obviously effective, but how do you practice something like that? How do you practice? I mean, cards, you can just sit in front of a mirror and practice, practice, practice. Do you do this in front of a mirror? Or do you um, do no, I, I think you just have to do it by... I mean, the, the, the way I got started with this was going up to a table with the Queen of Hearts and uh, saying to a lady, I want you to think of... Uh, I say, no, it's interesting how I, I can, you know, cards that people pick say things about people's personalities. So let, let me just try this with you. I want you to name your favourite card. But not like the ace of spades. Everyone says an ace or a spade for some reason. So, what might that be? What would you Queen say? Of Queen of Hearts. Well done. Um, yeah. And uh, um, I just started doing that a lot. And why, by saying the cards say something about our personalities, you're <coughs> you're cueing her to think of something that she thinks will reflect something about her. So she's not yeah. going to say three of clubs. There, there's no reason to. All right. So that immediately kind of begins to you know Queen of Hearts has already been suggested quite a lot, or Queen of Diamonds. Um, he said, and don't say the ace of spades. Everyone says an ace or a spade. But again, you're pushing them now. Go to a, go to a red card. Mm. And, um, uh, again, saying your favourite card as well. Not just name a card, but name your favourite card. So I used to try that. And a lot of the time, a lot of the time I would find that word. I had a lighter with the Queen of Hearts engraved on it. Right. And I would say, um, say to someone who was smoking, you know, I'd light the cigarette, do that spiel on them, and get them to blow smoke on the, um, blow smoke on my lighter. If they didn't say the Queen of Hearts, I'd go into something else. If they did, I'd flip the light around, and it just looked like it appeared appeared on the and side the of the lighter, engraved, which is lovely. So um, you just practice that by, by giving yourself an out, so it doesn't matter if they say another card. Right. If they say the Five of Diamonds, you're like, Five of Diamonds, okay, let's try something, and you pull out a Five of Diamonds and go into a different routine. But with with those effects, you're, you're, you're forcing a card. You cut the card on the table. Yeah, but you, you, you but no, but you don't want to be doing that until you so you, it's something you have to develop. You have to go through stages and practice. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't start doing that and committing myself and saying this will be the card until I'd done it long enough to know how to handle because it's just just handling people instead of handling cards. Right. Which is, you know, a far greater skill for a magician anyway. It's you know being able to handle people is is as important, equally as important as being able to handle cards. And this is just a a very people orientated well, type so of trick. The way that you're using words, I mean. I, I've seen magicians, I've done it myself, that have gone up to the table and gone, oh, I've had the Queen of Hearts, just gone, okay, think of a card, think, or name your favourite card. Mm. Oh, it's the Queen of Hearts. But already with that, you were you were making it much more personal, and, mm. uh, much more engaging for them, I felt, well, the I words so. you were using there. So it's, it, seemed, it seems very much that this all comes from your personality. I think so, yeah. I think anybody that just, say with this kind of stuff in particular, just went okay. Think of a, 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 a just tried to copy it. It wouldn't work. You've got you've got to find how it. You know, all, all this stuff is just born from from me and from just doing stuff and talking to people and doing other tricks with people and just trying little things out. It doesn't come from me reading, you know, a book on the subject and then sitting at home at a card table and, and working out a trick. It doesn't come from that. So it's um, anybody that does this kind of thing, it would have to come from their own personality and their own character, their own way of talking, their own rhythm of talking, yeah. the sorts of things they feel they can comfortably say. Um, and it should feel effortless. It should feel effortless when you do it, which is a kind of a key that you've probably got a, a clue that you've probably got it right. Um, so it is something that they have, that people have to build up themselves through performance. Yes, and I think that is, you know, it goes beyond just doing uh, just doing these mind reading things to to all of card magic. You know. I'm, I don't. I don't do a lot of a lot of tricks I used to do because they don't really um, appeal anymore. You know, I don't do. I mean, like the olive water I showed you earlier on. I, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just haven't done that for a very long time. I haven't done an ambitious card routine for a long time, and all all those things that are sort of old, old classics. I mean, they're, they're great, but they don't really suit me anymore. So I think, well, what what suits me? What when I walk up to a to a group of people, and um, or if they come and sit with me or whatever, and I'm creating this this thing for them. I, how do I want them to feel? Do I want them to feel really pampered, like this is really something kind of rich and, and special and, and lovely, or um, or is it more about just having a bit of fun or what? And once you decided what it is, you have to really create that and an ambitious card routine where it may work if you're one type of performer, but necessarily work if you're that type or my type mm. or whatever. So you just pick stuff that absolutely fits you, and then you have to be um, ruthless about that. With the mind reading stuff I do, I know how I do the mind reading in my mind. You know, I'm reading it from your signals or whatever, 
and I don't do any type of mind reading effect that can't be explained through that or doesn't look like that. I just don't do it.